What do you all think of the new Indiana Jones game? I think it looks very promising, but I've seen some people that are like, no, it looks trash. No, why didn't they go third person? It's first person, that sucks. Or I wanted it entirely first person. Now that they're doing third person for climbing ladders and stuff and cutscenes, I hate it. Yeah, you know, there's always gonna be some people that are upset about it, but I think what they've shown so far looks compelling. I think it looks pretty solid. It's of course coming from Machine Games paired with Lucasfilm Games. And it's, it's a first person shooter adventure game. And it does do some hybrid stuff with third person adventuring and puzzles and things like that, which makes sense. I mean, it's Indiana Jones. Why do an Indiana Jones game if you're never going to see Indiana Jones's face? You know, it, it just makes sense that you do cutscenes third person and some other stuff third person. But it does seem to be a pretty interesting and novel concept. You know, they're, they're trying to do something uh, on the level of what they've done with their Wolfenstein games, but put it into the franchise that is Indiana Jones. And I think that that actually could be a recipe for a pretty interesting game. Machine Games knows what they're doing. They've got a lot of pretty impressive games under their belt. It's being executive produced by Todd Howard. And the funny thing about Todd Howard is that he, for years, has had little nods to Indiana Jones. He's been a Giga fan forever. Let me just demonstrate that to you here very, very quickly with this little shot from a documentary released on the DVD that was included in the collector's edition of Fallout New Vegas. No, with the collector's edition of Fallout 3 is the one I meant. Collector's edition of Fallout 3. You see Todd talking? If we go back just a tad to show Todd at his desk, what's on his desk? What was that, Todd? What's that? This is like 2007, 2008, in the lead up to the release of Fallout 3 when they're filming this. And all the way back then, he's got Indiana Jones memorabilia on his desk. He also did other little bitty things like in his interview, I forget which interview it was specifically, but he did an interview where behind him on the shelves at his uh, office at home, he had the... Uh, arc from Raiders of the Lost Ark. So he's been a fan for ages. The other thing I referenced was Jeffrey Howard in the critique. And this is not something I know for a fact, just to be very, very clear. This is pure speculation, but Todd Howard's brother is a guy named Jeffrey Howard. It's this guy right here. And Jeffrey Howard is actually, he's worked very, very closely with Disney for ages. So he's worked on Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, Phineas and Ferb the movie, Planes, Pirate Fairy, all the Tinkerbell movies, all that stuff. So he's worked with Disney for ages, and I've always wondered since finding this out if that might be part of the reason that Todd was able to get access to the Indiana Jones IP because his brother maybe hooked him up with some of the connections and people to talk to. Makes sense, right? I think it makes sense. It's certainly a passion project once more. Uh, now that didn't turn out great for Starfield to be clear, but maybe it turns out better this time around because it's not BGS making the game. Hate, hate to be that guy to bring that up, but maybe. Having said that, there are some things people have said where they're like, I remember with this, they said the continuity within some of these shots that was revealed at the Xbox showcase was weird. They were like, oh, well, some of the shots, some of the objects move through the scene where in one shot, something will be one way. And in the next shot, it's different. I'm not personally convinced that that's enough to like make the game bad. And I think that's true of pretty much every game that you could look at where there's discontinuity that will pop up in random spots. But uh, that's where the discussion of like nitpicking versus fairly evaluating comes in. Let's see. So Fearless Wolf says problem I have is that it's going to be a 10 or 15 hour game for 60 or 70 bucks. That's true if you're not getting it through Game Pass and we don't know exactly how long it'll be. It might be that long or that short. It might be like longer than that, who knows? But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's probably going to be on the shorter side. Hey buddy, you just, you can't really be up there cause you bite cables and wires and then you're gonna electrocute yourself. So with this, like the game might be smaller in scope. It might be more of the, like a 10 to 15 hour game. Does that mean it's bad? No, in my opinion, it doesn't. I'm fine with shorter games as long as the production quality is up there and if the price and value proposition is fair. That being said, it's a Game Pass title, and with Game Pass, that does change the math. If you're buying it on Steam 
and it's 10 hours long, it might not make sense to buy it at 70 bucks. Absolutely. I think you're, you're right to point that out. But if it is like, uh, you know, available on game pass and you can just get it included in your membership, you're already paying for all of a sudden. Yeah, no, just download it and try it. It's how game pass fundamentally changes the, the equation on this stuff. Now, as for how big it is, how, how expansive or what the scope is like, I would guess somewhere between 15, and 20 hours. And for me, that's kind of the sweet spot for a game like this. I think of this in terms of scope similar to like The Last of Us um, or maybe an Uncharted game. It doesn't need to be 30, 40 hours. And honestly, something like The uh, the Last of Us Part Two being longer, I think actually hurt it because there's just a, a bit of fatigue that sets in with games like this that are really high production value, big set piece type games. I think you gotta be willing to shake it up a little. As for, yeah, Finley's like, who are you talking to? Shut up and cuddle me. <laughs> But with this stuff, I, I think what they've shown is certainly really promising. I think they've hit the right tone. I think the music's good. I think the just overall vibe is is about right for an Indiana Jones game that doesn't take itself too crazy seriously. And I'm hopeful for it. I know some people are just like bouncing and jumping at it at any chance they get. I saw some people saying it was too woke because you're fighting Nazis. And to that, I would just say like, it's Indiana Jones. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, I can't believe that that's the threshold now. But, uh, you know, I guess some people um, start to see it anywhere and everywhere they look. But with this, I, I think it's going to end up being fine. Uh, or even pretty good. I, I, this is one of those games where I just don't see what people are seeing when they're saying that it looks, it looks downright bad. I'm like, what we've seen so far, I think looks really promising. Does it look like game of the year winner? Probably not, but I think it looks like a, a solid, maybe eight, 8.5 out of 10. And that's good. That's a good score to get, especially for a platform like Game Pass, where you get it included in your membership that you already have, you know? I think this might be one of those games where it's it's perhaps a lot of the dialogue is caught up in like the PC market that doesn't have Game Pass. But even Game Pass, you can get just a one month membership for I think on Game Pass PC, it's what, 12, 13 bucks is what they just did. They change it. I think that's what they changed it to. But you just get that you play it. You're going to finish this within a month, no doubt. And uh, I think at that point, it just it just makes sense because then it's like, yeah, you can buy it for 70 bucks or you can try it for like. 12, $13 play through the whole thing, you know? Yeah. Imagine thinking that fighting Nazis is woke. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where when you start to see it everywhere you look, it's, it's a little ridiculous. And it also is like, so would you rather them fight not against the not, but for the, like, why is that woke? <laughs> like, you know, it's just, there's always going to be extremists on either side. Um, certainly. And maybe some of them are saying it's woke because there's also a female character that you're exploring with and that helps you on your adventure maybe that's part of it i don't i don't know i can't translate it anymore i can't keep up with it it feels like everything is is like cancelable now for various reasons i just think the game looks fun it looks interesting and i'm intrigued by it and i am at this point just kind of tired of the discourse around gaming being that everything is either like a 10 out of 10 masterpiece, or it's a total dumpster fire disaster that needs to be canceled and we need to make into a scandal. And I just don't think that that's particularly healthy for the industry. I don't think it's helpful. And I think we we should be like, remember that this is supposed to be fun. Like we were supposed to be playing games and having a good time, <laughs> you know, and it's okay. Have they shown gameplay? Yeah. So one of the other trailers that they've dropped was gameplay reveal trailer. Voila. So in this trailer, you remember this one where he like headbutts the dude and then they show some sequences of running around, shooting and punching. Uh, it, it's basically going to be just your a standard first person shooter and there's going to be some platforming. There's going to be a good amount of puzzling, I would imagine. For some elements, it'll pull into third person, but it looks like for most of the game, it's going to be first person, which I know some people got upset by that. But frankly, this is machine games. They specialize in first person combat. So the fact that machine games is making it, I, I would much rather them do it first person than try to do third person, which they're not familiar with. So I am not worried about it. And anybody who's like, I was going to play this, but it's first person. 
So I'm out. Okay. Okay. Like, <laughs> I don't, I, I think that that's a, a silly reason to back out of it. Um, unless you're somebody that like gets motion sick in first person games, which is totally fair. That happens with some people, but I, I think that what they've shown so far looks solid and I haven't seen anything that's like major red flags or anything. I think it looks like your standard kind of eight, 8.5 out of 10. It'll be fun for a weekend and then we'll move on and do the next thing. But that's perfectly fine for me. You know, how much of the budget went to Harrison Ford? I, this is the weird thing is that I, I read and uh, it was like a lengthy multi-paragraph post on X by somebody who I think was a lawyer is what their, their official title was, but they basically were breaking down how like likenesses work with a lot of these different uh, projects with regards like movies that use digital scans of actors and actresses after they pass away to be used in the films moving forward. And then other stuff like, like they might have Harrison Ford's likeness used here, even though he's not voicing it because Harrison Ford's not voicing Indiana Jones in this game. It's freaking uh, Troy Baker. So <laughs> it's always just funny to, to see how it works out. But basically what he said was that a lot of these companies actually have had their actors sign away the rights to their likeness um, so that they can be used in future trailers or artwork. Imagine if like they have Indiana Jones as a franchise, but then they want to use uh, a picture of Indiana Jones on the wall of the next character who's going to take over for Indiana Jones. Don't like that, please. They want to be able to use that even if Harrison Ford isn't available to film or whatever else. So they'll try to get them to sign away the rights to their likeness. A lot of the big A-listers, they retain the rights to it, so they still get paid royalties for it. But this guy's point was that a lot of actors signed away the rights to their likenesses years and years and years ago. And now, uh, <laughs> and now they're seeing the use for it, you know, because it's being used in video games and stuff like that. So I don't know exactly how that worked with Harrison Ford negotiating these contracts and deals and stuff, but yeah. Harrison Ford's not dead. No, not on the outside. Yeah, Troy Baker plays Indy in the game and he does a really good job of capturing Indy's mannerisms, uh, personality, demeanor, etc. I think so too. I mean, honestly, in a lot of the dialogue, where is it? Throughout history, mankind has built sites of great spiritual significance. If you were to draw a line through these ancient sites around the globe, you get a perfectly aligned circle. Honestly, a pretty good imitation. Pretty damn, pretty damn good. Pretty impressed. Indiana Joel, yeah. <laughs> um, so... I don't know. When people say it, it doesn't look good, I genuinely don't see what they're saying. Are they? Are you saying that like the combat looks a little stiff? May maybe. But even like this stuff, it's tough because there's no HUD. Like they turned the HUD off, obviously, for the capture. Um, and first person shooting and fighting always looks weird without the HUD. But like I, I think it looks pretty good. I just, I, I feel like I've, I'm just missing something. But that's been true of a couple of games where I've said like, I don't see what people are so pissed off with, um, with Fable. I think Fable looks fine, and people have been saying that that game looks like a dumpster fire. I don't see it. I'm like, maybe I'm just biased because I love IT crowd, and so seeing Morris Moss in a trailer got me really stoked. Maybe that's it. I'm not sure, but. So, uh, there's been a handful of times where it's like some people are freaking out about a game and I'm like, I just don't see it. I don't see what we're freaking out about. I feel like my, my flop meter is usually, that sounds really weird to say, but my, <laughs> my, my flop detection meter is usually pretty damn good. I got a lot of flack for like the the skeptical videos i did on starfield a lot of flack for videos i did on suicide squad before that was revealed to be what it was i got a lot of flack for a lot of games that have come out and ended up struggling pretty hard even like concord and uh you know i feel like i ended up being vindicated on a lot of these but with like Indiana Jones, I don't really see what people are freaking out about yet. Not to say that it'll end up being amazing. I just don't see what they're pointing to or what they're saying is is 
terrible. If Elden Ring is being called outdated visually, then this is too. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Like, I think Elden Ring demonstrates that you don't have to be graphically cutting edge to be a good game. Like, yes. I think you just made, like, furthered that point. <laughs> like, exactly. You don't need to be the most impressive graphically. Like, it's more about art direction. It's more about encounter design, stuff like that. It's it's much less about whether your game has the most realistic rendering of hair or reflections and stuff. 8 out of 10 game, great on PC Game Pass. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, it's on Game Pass, so it's going to be included in the price of your subscription that you probably already have because all of this stuff is just value propositions and what they're charging for what they're giving you. And if you have a Game Pass subscription that you're already a, a member of for something like this, it's like, okay, so you don't pay anything extra and then you get a solid 8 out of 10, 8.5 out of 10 Indiana Jones adventure game. That to me sounds like a win. Like, cool. Now, if you're one of those people that doesn't have a Game Pass subscription and you would be paying 70 bucks for this, okay. That's a different equation. That's a different question because on one hand, you have somebody looking at it and they're getting it included in a subscription they already have. So they're not paying extra for it. But in the other side, you're paying $70 extra for it. And that's a different thing to evaluate. And for a lot more people, that $70 price tag probably doesn't make the most sense. But that's precisely why they try to do promotions to get you to sign up for Game Pass, to get you to sign up for that $12 a month to play it, and hopefully you just don't cancel it after you sign up for it. But that's that's kind of the whole design of Game Pass is to release the games on both platforms so you can buy it full price, but you can also get it for much cheaper through their membership, and they just hope you don't cancel your membership. Yeah, on Game Pass, I agree, Doc, they need a steady stream of 8 out of 10s or 9 out of 10s. They, they got to have that. And it looks like this might be the first domino to fall um, if it ends up being solid, but we'll see. We also were hoping that Hellblade 2 would be that first 8 out of 10 that's really solid. But yeah, Jim Jimothy, I agree. You can't really pinpoint exactly where it's going to land. It could be a total broken mess. You're right. But I think if you look at their previous games, so their previous games were called The Machine, Quake... Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot on PS4 and Windows, developed by Arcane Leon. Leon. So Wolfenstein Youngblood, which was one of these like weird, this was the co-op one, right? I think this was the co-op one. They, yeah, they, they released like, you know, 60s. I have Finley hair in my mouth now. They released in like the mid 60s, most of the, most of the way around. Wolfenstein 2 was in like the mid to high 80s, depending on where you looked. Other publications gave it like high nines out of tens and stuff like that. Old Blood released like mid sevens, just about looks like. The New Order released high sevens, low eights, pretty well spread. So it seems like when they're not being forced to do co-op stuff to boost revenues and stuff to try and, and push people into, you know, all this stuff like Zenimax was doing back around then. Looks like they float probably in the, the eight out of 10 range most of the time. Some people love it and, and eat it up, you know, and, and give it nines out of tens or 10 out of tens. But a lot of people just aren't that, that stoked on it. But with this, it seems like when they're at their best, when they're really doing well, they're sitting in like the mid eights. And this looks to be, you know, an example of them being given a big budget, a big franchise. Yeah, Youngblood was part of the live service push that Bethesda had. Yeah. Astromath also, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, it seems like when they're at their when they're in their their good, their good spot, they're sitting in that like eight out of ten range, which is where I think this looks, just based on what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing anything that's like, ooh, game of the year contender, but it does look solid. So I would guess that it probably lands there. And in that eight out of ten range, I think that that is a great get for Game Pass. Now, does that mean that that eight out of 10 range justifies $70 if you're not already a Game Pass sub? No, no. For you, it might not be worth 70 bucks and that's okay, but that's precisely why they're gonna offer you a $12 Game Pass membership for a month to eat it up and try that. I don't know, and for anybody in chat, let's just do this real quick. For anybody in chat who thinks that this looks bad, that the, the circle whatever circle game what do they call it? the great circle indiana jones the great circle for anybody that says that that looks bad can you just explain to me why it looks bad 
because I just genuinely don't know what you're referring to. I have the Nazi TV guide from Wolfenstein 2 Collector's Edition. I leave it out sometimes when guests come around and watch them try to avoid bringing it up. <laughs> and they relief when they find out it's from a game. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Just troll them a little, little bit. That's funny. It just takes a game that you want to play for any amount of time across the span of three months. And now Game Pass doesn't make sense anymore. Oh, so like a game that you would spend 70 bucks on because you're going to play for more than three months. So why be a member of Game Pass? Yeah, I mean, that's why something like Game Pass doesn't make a lot of sense for like big MMOs to get access to that. But that's also precisely why a lot of their MMOs that they're going to be pushing or big online games that they're going to be pushing are going to come to Game Pass and try to bypass the fees and stuff by getting you to sign up that way. So like for for a World of Warcraft or something, it makes sense if they bring that to a Game Pass and it's like, oh yeah, your membership to World of Warcraft you get with Game Pass. So all of a sudden they get you to sign up for that and now you're a permanent subscriber to Game Pass because it gets you access to that live service game that you play. Or for Call of Duty, get it through Game Pass, you can play the multiplayer game or the multiplayer mode through Game Pass perpetually and you save that money. Um, and then they can bring other unique things like unique skins or battle pass stuff or whatever else they do over there. So we'll see how it plays out over the coming like months for sure. Bad writing. I mean, I would say Indiana Jones has always been kind of like C minus C plus level writing. It's never been particularly good, but that campy vibe is what people kind of eat up about it. Uh, characters look bad. I personally don't think so. I don't think the character models look bad. Um, the one thing I would say is the fur on coats and some of the hair looks a little off, but not bad enough for me to, to like be particularly upset about it. And, uh, coming from Bethesda Softworks. Okay. I mean, you know me, I will never, I will never, um, be like a Bethesda Softworks defender, especially after what they did through like 2018, uh, that whole period they, I, in my view, have a lot of work to do to win me back. Um, even still, but I don't know with that. I'm like bad writing. I don't think the writing from what we've seen is particularly bad. And Indiana Jones has never really had good writing. It's not really what makes that franchise tick. I don't think the characters look bad. It's first person. I, again, I don't think that that's a negative and it's Bethesda, which yes, I feel like the eyes are a bit weird. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't see it. I don't, Maybe it's because my eyes are weird. I don't know. I, I just, I don't see it. Will it run good on the Series S? Does anything run well on the Series S? That's the question. It seems like everybody develops for the Series X and then they just try to get it running <laughs> on the Series S. And they're like, does it technically run? Well, yeah, good enough. He took my thing. <laughs>